Hi, my name is Jake. Um, today I'm going to demonstrate a poplar tail and a axillary nerve block. Um, the patient that we have today is a 26 year old female that is here for an Achilles tendon and an ORAF of the forearm. She uh, was walking or running and then her Achilles tore leading her to fall causing a fracture of her forearm. So we're going to knock out both of those blocks and she has a general orthopedist that will take care of both of them at the same time. Um, so she is uh, 160 centimeters, weighs 60 kilograms with a BMI of 23. She has no past medical history, no known allergies, and isn't on any medications. Um, so she's an ASA class one and she works out every day. So she's gonna be a great surgical candidate for the procedure. Um, before I go see the patient, I'm going to go and just get all my supplies ready for both of these. Um, so I'm going to go and I'm going to make sure I have my syringes that I'll need, a stopcock, the insulated nerve stimulating needle, which will be a 22 gauge. Um, and then I'm going to make sure I have the syringes. Um, I'm going to need a bigger one or two bigger ones. So I'm going to need two that are going to hold probably up to 30 mLs just in case I need the volume. Um, of local anesthetic and then I'm going to have a couple of NS flushes so that I can uh, hydrodissect if I need to. Um, and then with the 20 mils that I'm planning to give for both blocks, I'm going to give 0.25% bupivacaine. Um, and with this patient, she can have a max dose or a max allotted bupivacaine of 150 milligrams. So with the two, I'm going to be well below that and I'll be just fine. Um, so both of my syringes are going to be filled with that of the sorry both of my 30 mil syringes will be filled with the 0.25 percent bupivacaine um, and then i'm also going to pull up two milligrams of versed and that's going to be my uh, pre-block sedation just so that she's comfortable and relaxed throughout the whole process i'm going to make sure i have all my sterile gloves um, and sterile supplies to clean and kind of just keep everything nice and uh, aseptic and once I have all those supplies, um, I'm going to make sure that, um, yeah, I have it all ready, get it all wrapped up, ready to go to the patient. And then we're not gonna use a nerve stimulator today because we're just gonna go off of ultrasound. So I have it, I'll go out to the pre-op area where the patient's at um, and go over the assessment. So now I'm in pre-op, I'm gonna review the patient's chart and labs. Um, I'm gonna make sure that her CBC is good, her coags are good, which they are, um, and then she doesn't have any other lab abnormalities, so everything's within normal limits. I'm gonna go ahead and ask her about her medical history, make sure she doesn't have any heart or lung history, which she doesn't. Her, uh, when I go and listen to her heart and lung sounds, they sound good. I'm gonna perform an airway assessment just to make sure that I'm good and prepared if I need to do anything emergent. She's a malum patty of one, um, sorry, class one. She has a class one upper lip bite test, so that's good. Um, her incisor gap is normal, and then she also has a normal thyromental distance. And her range of motion is good with her head and neck. I'm also going to check her range of motion of her arms, which are also normal, and her legs, and that's more just for block purposes. And then um, back to airway, her teeth are still intact, so that's good as well. We're going to keep it that way. Um, and then I'm going to go ahead and talk to the patient about the plan, just going over the popliteal block and the axillary block. We'll be in injecting uh, local anesthetic into the armpit area and back of the knee. Um, I'm going to go over the risks. So the risks would be that there, uh, she doesn't have any allergies, but there's always a risk that maybe she has an allergy to local anesthetic if she doesn't have it very often and doesn't know. There's a risk of possible nerve damage. Um, and hematoma and intravascular injection or last. Um, we're gonna be careful and with the ultrasound that'll eliminate most of those. The benefits are gonna be that she's gonna have really good, um, especially with the axillary, it's gonna have really good intraoperative pain management um, of the ORF of the forearm. The popliteal is also gonna help with intraoperative pain management, but more importantly for her, um, because the cert we will be doing general after, um, she will have better post-op management that'll last longer. Um, the alternatives, um, we could do the surgeon, we could opt for multiple pokes down lower, 
clustered like specific nerve blocks. Um, and then we could also do like a super scapular or sorry, super clavicular interscaling for the axillary or for the lower, we could kind of do a, also do individual blocks um, closer down toward the Achilles um, or we could do an epidural or spinal. Um, having gone over all these things, we're going to consent the patient. The patient consents to the original plan of an axillary and um, popliteal. So we have the consent signed. Um, and then before we start just going over what could be contraindications which weren't flagged at this point, uh, contraindications for all these blocks could be patient refusal. So we have consent, so that's fine. Um, any allergies to local anesthetic, uh, infection at the injection site, which was part of our assessment as well. So she doesn't have any uh, infections that we see at the injection sites. And then any coagulopathy, which she doesn't have. So we're good to go that way. So then, um, since I'm done talking to the patient, I'm gonna have the nurse come in. We're gonna get the cart rolled in. And the first thing I'm gonna do is hook the patient up to all the monitors that we're gonna need. Um, and so I'm gonna hook her up to EKG, SpO2, blood pressure, which will go about every three minutes throughout the procedure, and then another every three minutes after. And that's more for monitoring the sedation. And then most importantly with the sedation, we're also gonna hook her up to an end tidal CO2 uh, via nasal cannula, and we're gonna put her on uh, one to two liters of oxygen just to keep it patent and working and getting uh, appropriate numbers. So when she's hooked up to all the monitors, um, we're good to go ahead. I'm gonna give her her Versed, let her feel good and cozy, and then get her positioned. So we're gonna go, I'm gonna move this a little bit. And so we're gonna start with the popliteal block, because um, that one can be the most time consuming. The patient's being very helpful and she's holding the probe for us. So we have this here, we're gonna kind of move this. And then we're gonna get the area prepped and ready. Um, so I have all my sterile supplies. I'm gonna go ahead and get some clean gloves on and get the area prepped with chlorhexidine. As it's drying, I'll get my sterile gloves on and then grab the needle and ultrasound probe cover. And then I would have a nurse hand me the probe. I get the probe cover on, so now we're good there. It's sterile and we can go ahead and move forward. And then my nurse is gonna push my chair forward for me so that I can get this in good position. And right before we go to poke anything, um, we're gonna also do a timeout. So with this timeout, we wanna make sure this is the right patient. Are you the right patient? I'm the right patient. Good. <laughs> and then we're gonna also make sure, so her fat, her Achilles is on the right leg, is what the chart says. And I can see her Achilles is up in her calf, so that's the right leg. And then also her axillary, her ulnar fracture is also on the right arm. So we're gonna make sure that we're working on the right limb, which we are. It's at the right time before surgery, and uh, we have the consent signed and ready to go. So that timeout's complete, so now I can go ahead and start going. So we're gonna start in the popliteal fossa, and I'm looking for the popliteal artery, which is right there in the center of the screen. So now that we found that, we can see that we have the, um, what would be the common peroneal nerve on the screen. We're gonna go ahead and move up cephalad, following that. And although you might not be able to do this with your Achilles, we're gonna try it anyways. Can you go ahead and act like you're stepping on a gas pedal? Good. So we can see that toward the bottom. Go ahead and do it again. Good. So we need to move down a little bit. Okay, go ahead and do it again. Good, so we can see that those two are kind of right there together. And we can go down and see that they split. So now we're going back to where they joined. One more time, please. Good. So now I'm gonna, oh, I'm gonna have my assistant freeze. Can you do it one more time? Good. Okay, so they're both joined. So now we're gonna freeze just to demonstrate. So we have, um, this is the, hold on. This is the lateral aspect. So we have the biceps femoris over here, which would lead the semi-tendinosis and semi-membranosis on this side. 
And that's actually incorrect. I have this backwards. This is a semitendinosus, this is a semimembranosus, and biceps femoris on this side. Um, so when we go to inject, we're gonna go from lateral to medial. So the needle is gonna come in from this side, and we're gonna go down, and we're gonna inject at the nerve. And then we are probably even gonna have enough, because we're using 20 mils of local anesthetic. We're gonna do five to 10 at a time, and we can kind of get a circumferential block around the whole nerve. Um, and we can even hydro dissect down the middle a little bit if it is starting to split. And that'll just give us total coverage of that sciatic nerve. Um, and then that would, since it's high enough up and we're in that nerve sheath, it's gonna, I can, once I'm done, I can go cephalad and caudad to see the spread, make sure it's adequate, which it would be. Um, and so then that would complete the uh, popliteal nerve block. So now, having gone through all of the same preparations, we're gonna clean, I'm gonna get probably, uh, I'm gonna hand it to the nurse, we'll get a new probe cover, which is gonna get more ultrasound gel on it, which is right here. So we're gonna say that this is already done. Okay, so we've gone through the sterile prep and technique, everything's good, I have the cover on. Yep, the patient already knows what she's doing, but we're gonna make sure that we have it so that the axilla is open so we can see it and her arm's gonna be bent at a 90 degree angle, but not more because we don't wanna cause a brachial plexus injury. So then for this, we're going to, I've got my probe cover on. <clears throat> Go in at the axilla, yes, we're gonna unfreeze so we can see. And I'm gonna be looking primarily for the axillary artery. That'll be my first target, which is gonna hide now that I'm on camera. There it is. Okay, so we can see, oh, Right here, that's our vein, and then this is our artery. So I'm gonna go ahead and compress that down. And both ways, okay. So right here, we can see that that is the musculocutaneous nerve, and that's gonna be in the coracobrachialis. Down here, we can see this is gonna be the triceps. So then, here's our axillary artery. So we know that the radial nerve should be in this spot, which we can kind of see some hyperechoic body right here. The median nerve, I believe, is right here because that's, you can see a hypoechoic body here. And then on either side, we can't really see it, but we know that the ulnar nerve should be in either of these spots. So to get that, I'm gonna make sure that I have five mils of quarter percent bupivacaine. It's gonna go right here but around the musculocutaneous. And then I'll do another five mils right here where the radial nerve is. Another five mils up on top and Toward the end with one mil left, I'll kind of use it to slowly hydro dissect um, as I'm going across and then inject another five mils uh, behind the axillary artery. And that should give me enough spread between the radial and the me median to hopefully hit that ulnar nerve behind. Um, so we can go ahead and freeze that in there. Make sure I don't have to unfreeze. That's where we want it. Okay. And so then the important thing to note is as I'm doing all these injections, I also wanna make sure that I aspirate before I inject. Um, and that'll just make sure that I'm not in, an, like I didn't compress a vein and I didn't accidentally inject intravascularly, which with the amount of bupivacaine we're using would assuredly lead to last and some cardiac abnormalities. Once that's done, I can go ahead and clean up the patient, um, give it like 20 to 30 minutes, come back, see how it is, if they haven't already been taken to the OR and put under general, um, and then I can go ahead and chart the procedures and uh, take care of them in the OR. And that's the end of my video.